Butterfly 3000 by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. It is 10 songs, <laughs> 44 minutes long, and I was not expecting to hear parts of this album on Democracy Now! this week, but here the hell we are. Um, <laughs> Apparently it's a thing, so. Yeah, um, so King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, first of all, they sort of just decided if we have a wild name, people will just listen to us and they'll, they'll remember the name and then we'll just like work with it later. Um, have stuck with this sort of psychedelic rock post thing. And they've pretty much stuck to that for much of the 2010s, I want to believe. For some yes. reason, I feel like they were around earlier than that. But a lot of their discography I'm seeing is from the 2010s. And it's gone like in really sort of like indie, wild, psychedelic, um, like experimental forms, right? And it's been really cool. Culminating into Butterfly 3000, which is just this really nice, interesting mix of sonic weirdness. But it's like alternative, and it sounds really good, I'd say. Yeah, there. I really like the instrumentation on this album a lot. My only complaint is the vocals, but I'll get to that in a second. There's a lot of different sounds and stuff that you get in here. That's def- It's definitely an indie album throughout it, um, which we've been getting a lot of indie on Audio Face the past about a year and a half, two years. That has been knocking it out of the park. This is good for... Because um, we've been getting a lot of women email uh, uh, indie bands that have been destroying, like, a couple weeks ago, we had Japanese Breakfast um, and um, uh, Wolf Alice Kill It. And so you have a lot of these um, female-led uh, bands that are killing it. But we haven't had a male indie band really make a decent album in a little bit, at least for us reviewing it on Audio Face. And this is something that after my second listen, I got into it more. My first listen, I thought I was just a little stagnated and the where and the vocals were just really high pitched the entire time. They kind of stayed here, kind of like the same thing, my complaint of her earlier in this uh, episode. But within getting my second and third time listens through, I was like, okay, I can kind of get more of it and really, really appreciate the musicality and all the production over the rest of the instruments around. Now I get it as a whole work. Just took me a little bit. So, example, it opens up with yours. Really good, fun track. It reminds me a little bit of some early Foster the People, but a little bit more kind of on the nose, a little bit more upbeat, but um, kind of that early, like two door cinema club style of indie where it's just really fun, upbeat, but a little bit more psychedelic in that nature. Um, Shane Hyra, after that, again, it has like Throughout this album, you have this really fun electronic beat that kind of, I call it the boop boop bop robot video game beats that you hear kind of like throughout the album that's prevalent, but it's not annoying because it's something, a sound that can very easily just get into you be like, hey, I don't want to listen to this anymore. But they keep putting it in the parts that make sense within each track. Yeah, that's... Which is something that is just good, yeah. Yeah. Um, Songs like Shanghai, Dreams there... (laughs) I can't, I mean, like, I have a comparison for this. This is a band that um, the person I did the um, Avalanche's bonus episode with Oliver introduced me to, which is called The Books, I want to say. And they have an album called The Lemon of Pink. And, like, it is a super, like, deep state. This is why I love Oliver. He's got these, like, all these wild indie picks. Like, this is very, very random Plunder Phonics album from 2010, 2011. And it sounds very similar to this, especially Dreams, where it's, like, this sort of, whimsical building on itself kind of thing in the background with a lot of different instrumental callbacks kind of layered in there kind of secretly and hidden but also just like prominent and really creating this like unique soundscape that feels really complete like like it really does i had that same experience the first time i listened to it i was like okay they made some sounds it's good but kind of just like a mess the second third time i listened to it i was like there's a lot here and it's something i can really appreciate you just have to really get into it yes it takes a while like your first listen you're probably not going to enjoy it as much as your second or third time listens through it but it's a, i like it there's a lot of stuff like towards the end that i um uh, am started to enjoy more i'm like yeah I love butterfly 3000 like the last two tracks that were very very good you have 2.02 Killer Year, a couple of songs before, that's also very good as well. So you have some of those tracks that it takes you a little bit to get into because these tracks tend to be longer. They're four to five minutes long. Um, so it takes you a little bit to get through the album, but it doesn't drag on to me. The first listen, it felt like it, but the other listens through, once I kind of got understanding, it was, okay, I can get through this and really enjoy it. Yeah. 
Um, the song Catching Smoke, which is like smack dab in the middle, is a really good, yep. like, I think it even has like, no, I wouldn't say like mainstream appeal, but like people who aren't usually into indie could like really vibe to this song. Um, well, I heard the, yeah, I heard this one on XMU a couple of times. Well, there you go. A shortened version. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'd be surprised if like a six minute 28 version got like on the radio. That'd be great. Um, well, X, XMU don't care because it's Sirius XM and they don't give two fucks. They'll curse and do whatever they want. They play some, they played really long radio head. Like they played, uh, Life in a Gla- Glass House alternate version once, like two years ago, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? This track doesn't make sense, but okay. That's funny. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's really good. I, I love it. I added it to the Audio Phase 2021 uh, AF playlist, so check that out there. But yeah, as you are saying, like, y'all love Butterfly 3000. They end really nicely. They end the record really beautifully. And... Uh, it's st- like on the verge of sounding like an album to me. It's still kind of a collection of songs, but that also could just be like needing to listen to it more. Yeah, it's definitely, like, yeah, I can understand that. That's one of my only issues with it is it's, I don't know if it's too cohesive or if it's, I don't know. It's it's hard to pinpoint it just because it's very out there within stuff, but I enjoy it. Yeah. I think it's definitely good. I think you can definitely find, um, especially for folks in the um, alternative indie music space, or even folks who are are just like adjacent to it, like good music, can definitely find something to like in uh, the band with the ridiculous name and their music. And I think oh, for sure. there's one, um, there's a couple of uh, music reviewers who have said that King, naming themselves King Gizm the Lizard Wizard is either a blessing and a curse. Cause like you're never gonna forget that name. It's just like such a ridiculous name. But there have probably yeah. been a number of people who are just like on principle on name alone. I'm not listening to that. Or like have just gone have made a lot of assumptions or judgments based off the name. Um, which probably half those assumptions can be right and true. But like uh, this is solid music, and we've listened to music regardless of the name. Oftentimes because the uh, name is ridiculous. How else do you think we found Pooh Shiesty? <laughs> There you go. So, Arbitrary scale. Yes. Federal holidays. Uh, I'm going to give this... What's one of those oddball... F- you know what I'm going to give this? Inauguration Day. Because the federal holiday, but it only comes once every four years. It's like an oddball federal holiday. We don't think it's about oddball it. Oddball you know, Oddball All enough right, for King Gizzard. That's, that's fair. Um, this is going to get... This could be your 4th of July. So this could be your fireworks going off into random stuff or maybe a firework gets stuck in the grass and you have to run away because your friend's an idiot and you nearly die from a firework going boom and you have that on video and it's the funniest thing in the world in now, Minecraft. In retrospect. <laughs> in Minecraft. 